the treasure that came out of the earth. Historical notings say that Sri Raghavendra had thrice visited this place of Sri Sumatindra's camping. While on one such visit only, his disciple Venkanna, who was engaged for bringing water to the Srimad, had asked something innocently. He had often heard Sri Raghavendra explaining to devotees, disciples about salvation and the ways of attaining it whenever he was passing that way on his errand. Venkanna, of course, had comprehended from what little he had heard that moksha was supreme, something near impossible for the ordinary mortals to attain. One day, when many were present before the Swami, Venkanna was standing aloof. Sri Raghavendra saw him and queried, What Venkanna, you seem to be hesitant about asking me something. I want moksha, Swami, the disciple said in all his innocence, startling everyone. All those present there were throbbing what reply the Swami would give to that. Tomorrow there is going to be a big yajna here. As you know, please come at that time, said the Swami. Accordingly, when the disciple came there the next day, Sri Raghavendra asked him to jump into the Agni Kunda, religious fire. The Sishya, without asking whether there was no other way of attaining moksha, jumped into the fire as ordained by his Guru, exhibiting Guru Bhakti of the highest order. How Sri Raghavendra proved the disciples' attainment of salvation or moksha to those present there, has been covered in detail in part 1. The strange happening had taken place at Chittal Drug or Chitradurga. Sri Sumati Indra was once camping at that place, which had become renowned after the above mentioned incident. Even today, those going to Chitradurga can see there the spot at which Venkanna had attained his moksha, the one where that memorable yajna had taken place. It is a small area adjacent to the road with an indication board giving information. The Ragapa mentioned earlier was the grandson of the Venkanna figuring in the incident. And Sri Sumatindra was waiting for his arrival only. Sri Sumatindra Tirtha had more fondness for Ragapa for the reason that he was the grandson of Venkanna who was a beloved disciple of Sri Raghavendra. The staff of the Sri Mat, in fact, sent someone to bring Ragapa at once, since the Swami had made inquiries about him. There was a big gathering at the Sri Mat that day, eager to witness the Mula Rama Puja. Ragapa too came there and prostrated before the Swami. Please come, Ragapa. Swami, it appears you would call me for some urgent purpose. Yes, Ragapa, what your grandfather had prayed for you, uh, prayed for had been fulfilled by Sri Raghavendra. Likewise, I am asking you now to do something and you will have to comply with that. Swami, I am ever at your service. Please tell me what it is and I shall most certainly carry out your command at once. We shall go outside. I shall tell you everything in the presence of the devotees waiting there. As Sri Sumatindra entered the Puja Mantap, the crowd stood up in great reverence. The Swami, gesticulating to the gathering to sit down, called Ragapa aside and spoke to him something before he started addressing those present there. Dear devotees, this Chitaldru is an ancient place and a holy one too. In the Dwaprayuka, the Panchapandavas had lived here. It was the Hidimba uh, one then. The demon Hidimbasura, who was then ruling this place, was committing atrocities and giving trouble to the virtuous ones. And when the sadhus complained about him to the Pandavas, Bhima fought with Hidimbasura and brought him down. Later he married Hidimbi, sister of Hidimbasura at this place, and father Gatotkaja. After coming here, I had a dream two days ago. Sri Raghavendra appeared in my dream and told me to leave this miniature Brindavana here itself, the one that he had performed puja to and had been earlier fashioned by his own hands. It was being carried by my gurus to the various places they were travelling to, performing puja to it without interruption. 
I have also been following the tradition, but now the holy thing is to be left here, the pontiff announced. On hearing that, the crowd rose as one man and raised a cry of joy, hailing Guru Raja, Guru Raja in great veneration and awe. The Swami continued, This is a place that has the potence to confer anything prayed for soulfully, and it is your punya or merits that is the cause for this Brindavana being installed here. The one that Sri Raghavendra had fashioned himself with his holy hands and performed puja to, evoking an even greater acclamation from the crowd of devotees there. Besides, another mysterious happening is to take place here. On the day following Sri Raghavendra's appearance in my dream, this morning Sri Anjaneya too came in my dream and I am too eager to comply with his ordain today itself. I am craving to see those treasures indicated by Sri Anjaneya. Yes, Ragapa and others have come now, said the Swami, when he and a few persons were seen entering there with the crowbars and other implements for excavating the earth. Sri Sumatindra then walked some distance and marked an area, summoning Ragapa and the workers to have that place dug up. And when they commenced the task, the cavity was getting deeper when the excavation was carried out. And at one stage, one stage the men cried aloud in great excitement, Swami, please have a look, there is some idol here. The Swami got down into that hollowness and when he espied a vigraha there, he took it out and placing it on his head, came out of the pit hailing Rama, Rama. The Bhaktas who saw the idol raised ecstatic cries that echoed all around. This is enough for today. We shall continue this digging process tomorrow also. Dear devotees, please participate in today's Samstana Puja and reassemble here tomorrow, announced Sri Sumatindra and left for the Sri Mat after making arrangements to keep the place under proper surveillance and protection. The Rama Vigraha found as the treasure was kept in puja that day itself and special Abhishekas were performed to it. The pontiff during his Anugraha Vachana that evening invited devotees to witness uh, a strange happening to take place on the following day. Everyone in the town started talking that day about the amazing find and the miniature Brindavana to be installed there as graced by Sri Raghavendra, wondering where all the holy thing would have travelled to with the Sri Raghavendra, Sri Yogindra, Sri Surindra and Sri Sumatindra and what a blessing it was for the people of Chitradurga, undoubtedly for their punya to have it installed at their place. Today Sri Rama has come. Who will come tomorrow, guess it? asked one. It could be Sri Lakshmana, Sri Sita or Sri Hanumanta said another hesitantly. Yes, they may emerge too. On the morrow it will it will be known, was the talk on the lip of everyone. It was dawn the next day, and musical instruments were spreading their resonance all around. The entire town was busy, and the elders of the place marked a circle to keep the crowd out of its periphery. People from nearby areas too, had flopped there and they all rose as one man to hail Sri Sumatindra. Pandits were chanting Sri Hari Vayu Stuti and Vedic scholars were in meditation of Pavamana Sukta. Ragapa, please tell the workers to climb down the pit. I shall also follow them. Swami, why should you get down into the pit? We shall ourselves continue with the excavation. The workers said and went down eagerly but came out even more swiftly, panic-stricken. What has happened, please? Swami, there is a big serpent lying coiled inside. The Swami, at once meditating upon the Lord, sprinkles some consecrated rice inside the pit. The monstrous reptile instantly emerged out of its hideout and slithered away harmlessly. Now you can get down, please said Sri Sumatindra and himself setting his foot inside the hollow space started supervising the digging operations from a vantage point. After some excavation, the workers shouted, Swami, look at this exquisite idol of Sri Krishna. Taking out the find from its place of concealment 
and handing it to the pontiff. Pontiff. Sri Sumati Indra Tirtha then observed, We got Rama and now Krishna. Therefore, continue with the search. Paumana Sukta and Sri Harivayu Stuti were vibrant in the ambience then. The priestly group chanting those at the spot. Soon, with further efforts at digging, the laborers came across an impediment that appeared to be an icon, dark in color. And when the mud around it was removed, they were astounded by the grandeur of the find which they placed before the Swami for his examination. Raghapa burst out in great exuberance. Swami, I have not seen such a splendid thing before. Yes, this is something very special. The Anjaneya idols installed by Sri Vyasaraja have only one bell as an adornment in the tail of the deity. But this Vigraha has five of those Swami. Yes, this is a rare find indeed said Sri Sumatindra and looking at it closely folded his hands in great obeisance, a chillness passing through the spine. Oh, what a splendid icon it is. Please bring it out slowly with utmost reverence and care, said Sri Sumatindra climbing out of the pit. The devotees outside were eagerly awaiting the Swami's announcement about the find. Dear Bhaktas, yesterday Sri Rama came out and today Sri Krishna began Sri Sumatindra. Then Sri Ragapa um, brought out the Krishna idol and showed it to those around, their cry of joy renting the air. O oh, devotees, before this Krishna idol was retrieved from the earth, a Krishna Sarpa, King Cobra, lay coiled on it, and the very sight of it caused horripilations. The reptile that had been lying coiled on the idol of the Lord, who had performed the Kalinga Nartana, slithered away innocuously in your very presence when I prayed to the Almighty. The Shila that was found later is an even more exciting and rare one and will soon be brought out by the workers. Indeed, we are fortunate and privileged to have darshan of such an uncommon thing, said the Swami, kindling the interest of everyone present there. With five bells as adornment in his tail, when Sri Anjaneya Swami came out majestically, the pandits and the priests enhanced the tempo of their chanting of Paumana Sutta and the Sri Harivayu Stuti, concluding later in a resonance that was optimal. When the idol was later washed, removing all the mud and sod on it, the Vigraha was dazzlingly beautiful, its finesse captivating everyone and inducing the obeisance of touching it to one's eyes with utmost reverence. And in that day, Samstana Puja, along with Sri Rama, Sri Krishna's Vigraha too, had special Abhisheka Aradhana. The Anjaneya idol with five bells as adornment on the tail was also kept in that puja setting on that occasion. Sri Sumatindra announced after the puja that in the evening he would share with the Bhaktas interesting information about the idols retrieved from the earth, making everyone await such hour with eager expectation.